There used to be dinosaurs right where I'm walking now, and they were no laughing matter. Some dinosaurs, like the Tyrannosaurus rex, were as big as, well, as big as that backhoe. And just one of its teeth was as long as the space between your wrist and your elbow. Can you imagine how large its mouth must have been? What if that machine wasn't digging, but eating any and everything that crossed its path? You know, I feel pretty small next to these large machines. Kind of gives me an idea of what it would feel like to live in a world full of giant dinosaurs and ear-splitting sounds. that on construction sites, just like this one, machines sometimes dig up teeth and bones of dinosaurs that have been buried for, oh, for millions of years. I've been reading a fascinating book all about digging up dinosaurs and putting them back together. In fact, that's what it's called. There's a dinosaur in this book whose head is almost two times larger than your entire body. And it shows us just how small you and I would seem if we were to stand next to a dinosaur. As you can see, I've been through this book more than once. Digging up dinosaurs and putting them together again by Aliki. Have you ever seen dinosaur skeletons in a museum? I have. I visit them all the time. I went again yesterday. I saw a Potosaurus. It weighed 90,000 pounds. A Potosaurus is its real name, but some people call it Brontosaurus. I saw Iguanodon. I recognize Iguanodon by its horn thumbs. I saw Triceratops. Tri means three, three horns, triceratops. <laughs> I like to say their names. Tyrannosaurus used to scare me. Just its head is almost twice my size. Hello up there. I'm not afraid of dinosaurs anymore. Sometimes I call them, you bag of bones, under my breath. I used to wonder where they came from and how they got into the museum. But now I know. Dinosaurs lived millions of years ago. A few of them were as small as birds, but most were enormous. Some ate plants. Some ate the meat of other dinosaurs. And some may have eaten the eggs of other dinosaurs. Ew. Dinosaurs lived everywhere. They lived on every continent in the world. Then they died out. There hasn't been a dinosaur around for 65 million years. Until about 200 years ago, no one knew anything about dinosaurs. Then, people began finding things in rock. People were finding fossils. Fossils are a kind of diary of the past. Here's how they formed. A dinosaur died and sank into a river. Its flesh rotted. Its skeleton was covered by sand. In time, the sand and skeleton turned to stone. The dinosaur was hidden for millions of years. The earth changed. Then, some of the stone broke away and part of the dinosaur showed. Everything we know about dinosaurs comes from studying fossils. What finds these were? People crowded into museums to see them. 
But the dinosaur bones didn't just get up and walk there. They had to be dug out of the ground, slowly and patiently. This is how fossil hunters work. First, they have to find the dinosaur. They search along riverbanks and in quarries. They climb up high cliffs and down deep canyons. With luck, someone spots a fossil bone poking through the rock. The site is covered with a tent and the work begins. Scientists chip at the rock close to the fossil. They brush away the grit. They have to be very careful. A fossil is hard as rock, but very brittle and easy to shatter. Sometimes the bones are found all scrambled up like this. Figuring out how they go together is some job. When the bones are ready to be moved, they are carefully wrapped in tissue paper and put into boxes or sacks. Large bones are covered with a plaster cast, just as a broken leg is. The cast protects the bone. At the museum, scientists study the bones. They try to figure out what size and shape the dinosaur was. They try to find out how the dinosaur stood and walked and what he ate. If there are enough bones, scientists are able to build a complete skeleton. Until recently, only a few museums had dinosaurs. Then, scientists learned to make copies of the skeletons. A mold is made for each bone. Each bone has a top and bottom mold. Now museums all over the world have dinosaur skeletons. And many people can spend hours looking at them the way I do. See you at the museum sometime. Our friend in this book sure knew where to have a good time. Museums are fantastic places. They have incredible things to do, see, and hear. You know, museums are a lot like zoos, only their treasures are still alive. In fact, many of the animals on the earth today are living cousins to the dinosaurs. And looking at them can help us to imagine what real dinosaurs might have been like. Imagine for a moment your relatives assembled, and when you looked around the room, you noticed they resembled those great and mighty creatures that once lived here before us, our favoritest of ancestors, the dinosaurs. Lizards, alligators, even snakes with slinky necks could look through family photos and find Tyrannosaurus rex. Most likely, they would recognize his dried-out, beady skin. It's pretty much the same type as they now are living in. Or what about the tortoise? Go and tap upon his shell. He'll remember ancient tales, though they'll take him time to tell. His uncle, Ankylosaurus, was a dino of distinction. He passed on down his hard hat back. The rest went to extinction. Take a good look at Rhinoceros. His face is old and fossilous, and that nose, who knows what he did to merit it? From Triceratops, he did inherit it. Way a hippopotamus's bottomus. He won't make a fuss. His dino cousins were such blimps, the hippo thinks he's quite the shrimp. If an elephant's in a funk, ask him where he got his trunk. He won't name a department store. He'll credit it to a dinosaur. So, if your relatives seem reptilian, and some even look like they're over a million, climb on up your family tree and check your dino history.